Good morning and welcome to week three, lesson A. Oh, hello. Hello, Mr. Bud. Hello, hello, hello. Alrighty, so in every chapter review, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over the frappy. The PDF themselves have lots of other questions with answers if you'd like to preview any of those. The assignment itself is posted at the end of the video. Alrighty, so chapter one review. Let's begin. So of course, stop. Read the content first. You should be reading through every question that I show you, always do a mental attempt. So pause the video before you see the answer. Attempt that question or really think through, even if you don't do the math yourself, could you have set up the question or anything like that? And of course, you know, tacos are awesome. So, all right. So blah, 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 directions, information, blah, blah, blah. If you would like access to a 15 minute timer or when you go do your practice problem, if you want a 15 minute timer, here is a little relaxing 15 minute timer I like to use for myself. Um, you can use it, you don't have to use it. Remember to pause the video and read through every slide. <laughs> okay, so using the data from the 2010 census, a random sample of 348 US residents age 18 and older were selected. Among the variables recorded was gender, male or female, housing status, rent owned, marital status, married or not married. The two ways table below summarizes the relationship between gender and housing status. So we're not looking at marital status just yet. So right now we've got the relationship between gender and housing status and question A, B and C are dealing with that one table. They say what percent of males in the sample own their own home? Okay, we can figure that out. Make a graph to compare the distribution of housing status. Cool, we're gonna visualize and compare the information. And finally, using that graph, describe the relationship between them. So we're gonna put it in words. Part B gives us the table between um, marital status and housing status. So no longer gender, but whether you're married and you own or not married in your own, et cetera. And then for this one, they want us to uh, Answer this question. Is the relationship between marital status and housing status stronger or weaker than the relationship between gender? So we're gonna compare the answer from C to D, and then we're gonna justify that choice using the data. So basically summarize that relationship in words. So again, pause the video if you want to attempt this question. If you wanna read it through for yourself and you're not happy with the video method, you can always go click on the assignment where the frappy can be found as well. All right, so what percent of males in the sample own their own home? So I wanna look at a row, I want a column. I wanna look at the column of ownership and I wanna look, or sorry, the row of ownership and I wanna look at the column of percent of males. So now I'm looking at the information I need. So if I, if I, if I hone in on the, where those two colors connected, I'm dealing with 132 as my numerator and my denominator is gonna be the total of people um, male. What percent of males in the sample own their home? So what percent of the males would mean that that is my denominator, we're dealing with the males in that solution set. Sorry guys, today my allergies are going nuts, so I keep scratching at my eyes and I shouldn't. All right, if you need more practice on distributions, you can practice conditional distributions here. If you wanna go back and work on marginal distributions or total value distributions, you sure can. Uh, there's some con practice right here. So make a graph to compare the distribution of housing status for males and females. Well, in order to do that, it's kind of a two-step thing. First, we've got to get all of our uh, distributions, and then we can actually plug it into a visualization. So we already got one, right? We already got males who own. We did that in the previous slide. Now let's go ahead and do males who rent, then females who own then females who rent. Look how easy that was. So now that we have all of our values, we have to decide on a visualization. Just as a recall and recap, categorical data has visualizations like this. Today, we're gonna use the side-by-side -side bar graph because we have a two-way table. And so um, we wanna use a side-by-side -side bar graph. You could have done uh, plot lines as well, but um, beware the segmented bar graph as you might read data at the highest point instead of the size of that area. So reading a segmented bar graph can sometimes get a little chaos -y. Be careful when you see problems like that. Quantitative data tends to be distributed as dot plots, stem plots, and histograms, but again, we're dealing with categorical data and a two-way table, so we're gonna do a side-by-side -side bar graph. So I go ahead and do a side-by-side -side bar graph. I separated it out into males and females, and then the light bar is own and the dark bar is rent. 
Ta-da! So comparing the housing status for males and females, that's where they gave me the clue. We're comparing the housing status of males and females. So those are my two colors. And then we distributed it out in the status of the males and the females. So now we have some information. Males who owned and females who own kind of look about similar. Males who rent and females who rent kind of look about similar. Isn't that interesting? All right. So if you need more practice um, analyzing categorical data, here's a con. And let's use that graph to describe the relationship between gender and housing status. So here's that graph. And let's, they, we got a little sentence written up for us. So let's read the description. There doesn't seem to be much of an association between gender and housing status. You saw that they were about even, right? So there's not really an association or a distinction. Um, the percentage of each gender that owns their home is roughly the same. Although it is slightly higher for females, 73.5 versus 72.5, um, knowing a person's gender provides very little additional information about their housing status. Hmm, interesting. Let's move on to question D. If you need more practice on interpreting two-way tables, you sure can go to this con practice. The two-way table below summarizes marital status and housing status. So remember, with this question, we were doing two things. We're, we're comparing it from C to D. So um, C, there was really no relationship or association. And now we're going to compare that to marital status versus uh, ownership and rent. And then we're going to um, justify our choice using our data. So in order to justify the choice using the data, don't we have to create the same thing we did for C? Oh my God, we do. So we're going to do our conditional distributions and then we're going to visualize it using a bar graph and then we're going to compare. But because of time, I'm going to go ahead and show all of that. So again, figure out your distributions, visualize the data, interpret or compare. So here are the four uh, percent values, and here is that end bar graph. So I'm just going to start with the bar graph. If I look, I can see that if I am married, I have a pretty high chance of owning. And if I am married, it's rarer that I am renting. However, if I'm not married, ownership and rental are about similar, they're, but they're in that middle point, right? So what they're saying is if you're married, you're way more likely to own than to rent. But if you're not married, it could kind of be, you know, a catch to catch 22 or whatever, like I'm not a catch 22, uh, six, six one way, half a dozen the other. That's what I meant to say. Sorry. Um, it's it could be, you know, like they could rent, they could own. It's kind of eh, and then ownership just tends to be a little bit higher. But let's look at those actual numbers and do our comparison. So. <clears throat> Because the percent of married respondents who own their home, 81.1% is quite a bit larger than not married respondents, 60.3, there seems to be an association between marital status and housing status. This association is stronger, much stronger, right, than the association between gender and housing status because the difference in percents who own a home is greater for marital status than it is for gender. So we took, and I'm going to put my laser pointer on, we did a comparison with, with subtraction, with uh, differences. We took this value right here, married and owned, and not married and owned, and we subtracted them and found a difference of 20.8%. And then when we went back to question C, uh, where are the numbers? Ah, uh, they're somewhere. Here they are. We're back to question C. We took uh, the female owned 73.5 minus the male owned 72.5 and only got that 1%. And so that is where this is where they're comparing that there must be a stronger association. Ta da! That's all I've got. So here comes the assignment. Oh, sorry. Need more practice. So here's that con unit exam. If uh, there's not a unit exam that matches, I'll post the quizzes or whatever works for us, of course. So here comes the assignment. At this point, you can skim through your PDF for answers to the odd questions from the chapter review. You can also email me and I'll send you um, the answers to the even if you'd like or if you don't have access to those. Or you can go ahead and begin the assignment. Go directly to the assignment where you can choose any one option. Here are my three options. I didn't post these in the assignment itself. You had to have watched the video to get all three options. Solve three multiple choice questions from the practice test. That's the only one that's posted on the assignment. Or if you'd rather, you can solve one free response question from the practice test. Or if you'd rather, you can send screenshots of the con practice and your final screen. So I want to see 
every question as you do it and got it right or wrong, and then your final screen, your percentage correct. Um, this is going to be a lot of screenshots. Please put them all in one document. This is honestly where I think a lot of you might do most of your practice or focus on the free response um, because that's what the AP exam is going to be here. But it's up to you, so I'm giving you guys choice. All righty. See you in the next video.